Jai Hind Vande Matram, this is Kunal Mehta from Make Me Scientific. Yesterday, there was a physics paper of ICSC grade 10. The paper was actually a little bit of tricky. It uh, had a lot of questions in which you had to think as well as uh, concepts were to be applied very carefully as well as mathematical application was there. So, it is my attempt to solve the, the paper. So, let's begin with the section A. The first MCQ, when the bell is fixed on the cycle, rings then the energy conversion that takes place is of course the answer is the kinetic energy to the sound energy right and the moment you do like this so in the kinetic energy of the thumb or say it uh, the, the bell is in the that part of the bell which you push is in motion and of course the sound energy is produced so you have the first option and the second option in which the sound energy is at the output Correct. And of course, the gravitational potential energy of the bell does not increase. The bell of the, the height of the bell remains the constant. So, we have only one such option that is the B option. So, I would be correcting the B option over here like this. The door is opened up by turning the handle and the length is given. So, the moment is this one. So, moment force multiplied by perpendicular distance is itself known as the moment of force or it is also known as torque. So, the length is given to you 0 0.2 meter. The minimum force F minimum multiplied by perpendicular distance is equal to 1 Newton times meter. So, force is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.2. So, that is 20 Newtons. That is the answer to the problem. Okay. The force F moves a load from A to C. So, the displacement is happening in which direction? A to C. And you are also exerting the force in this direction. So, force is applied upwards and the displacement also needs to be taken in the same direction. The other, these displacements are given to just confuse you. Even though this is an angle 37 degree, work done is always force multiplied by displacement, but these two must be in the same direction or else you will have to take the component. Here it is specified that you are giving the force in the upward direction. So, the displacement should also be taken in the upward direction. So, 5 meter is the answer to the problem. Right? The fourth part, the number of nucleons. Nucleons means the mass number, the protons plus neutrons, the sum of protons and neutrons that is 128. So, inside the nucleus, 128 particles are there. It means it emits beta particle. So, during the emission of beta particles, the atomic number increases, the number of proton, proton increases by 1 and the neutron decreases by 1 then also the mass number remains the same. So, still our answer is 128. Now, assertion and region, the ultraviolet radiations are scattered more as compared to the microwaves radiation. Uh, okay, that is because, yeah, scattering is proportional to 1 upon lambda raised to 4. Yeah, so we may say that ultraviolet radiation, since their wavelength is less, so, their scattering is more. So, this is sounds correct. Wavelength of the uh, is more than, no, this is incorrect. It is less. So, that means A is correct, A is false. Sorry, A is correct. So, this option we need to consider and both A and R are true. This is incorrect. A is false, this is also incorrect, both are false, so which leaves with only B option and R is false. So, B option is the answer to the problem. Right? When a stem of a vibrating tuning fork is pressed against the table, this is definitely an example of forced vibration, C option. So, in the liver of class 3, the effort is actually in between. So, in pair of scissors, the effort is outside. So, it can't be the option. In wheelbarrow, the load is at the middle part. So, this is again an incorrect one. In the crowbar also, the effort is outside. So, which remains with human forearm, which is the answer to the problem. The effort is in the middle part, right? The biceps. Okay. The specific resistance, that means the resistivity, R is equal to rho L by A, this part. This is purely dependent on the type of material, right? Had it been resistance, then this, this, 
this and this all options would have been the correct answer but this is resistivity only the material the ninth one states that uh, let's look at all the options the appliance basically i'm going with this part this is the switch so this is the switch here it is the switch and the switch we know that to avoid the body current right and uh, we always connect the switch to the live wire otherwise it might still happen that the appliance may get damaged due to short circuit right so the switch is always connected to the live wire and live wire is brown in color so here this connection sounds good here it is not connected switch is connected to the blue wire which is neutral so this one is neutral this is live live neutral brown is live this is earth wire which is yellow or green in color so earth and neutral sorry the live one this is incorrect because there is no neutral over here so these two diagrams are incorrect the switch is connected to the neutral wire so it is incorrect so this is our correct answer let's go ahead the radioactive element is placed in an evacuated chamber rate of radiations will never ever change radioactivity does not depend upon any of the factors so it will remain unchanged now this one is a good question the 14th one is heat versus change in temperature so this is q versus delta t and the slope is q by delta t because it is y axis quantity upon x axis quantity now since the temperature is rising you may apply the formula q is equal to mc delta t so let's bring delta t under it so that remains mass into specific heat capacity so this term itself is the slope because q by delta t is m into c which is only heat capacity mass times specific heat capacity so d option is the right answer so now let's talk about uh, the last mcq that is the 15th one that is of the insertion of the glass slab in between the rays which are being converged by the help of the convex lens so what's going to happen is we have the convex lens let me draw it like this and now with one ray only you may be able to understand the entire concept so this is the ray which is coming from the lens of course in absence of the glass slab it would meet somewhere over here this point we call it as focus right now see if you insert a glass slab like this so like this one let's insert this and i'm going to use a different light ray different color for showing the light ray okay okay now here is the normal and the light ray would bend towards the normal so like this and then here again normal and this light ray would bend away from the normal such that it is going to be parallel to the incident ray right so like this so basically this is the lateral shift that is being experienced you know that this is the extended line this is the expected path but there is a small amount of lateral shift and due to that this point f or the focus will get shifted away from the glass lab or the lens so that means move away from the glass lab a option is the right answer okay let's move ahead okay now in the following atoms which one is a radioisotope so the correct answer is carbon 14 c14 and carbon 14 is used in carbon 14 dating technique and it is used to find out the age of the extinct animals or suppose you get a bone of uh, say for example an extinct animal and with the help of this carbon 14 dating you can uh, uh, expect the age that how uh, how many years before that organism was in living condition of course in details about the technicalities you will learn in the nucleus chapter in grade 12 right so you can simply put up carbon 14 dating technique now here you can see that with the help of this bottle opener this point remains fixed so this is the fulcrum and if you lift this in the upward direction so you are providing the effort here of course this is the load which you want to lift so load is in the middle part in only class 2 levers so this is a lever of class 2 so that is the solution of the b part right fill in the blanks when the stone is tied to a string and it is rotated in a horizontal plane so this is our stone and here our thumb is going to be and you are this is the string of length l and you are rotating it in a circular path 
and the condition is we moving in a circular path there should be an inward centripetal force which is provided by the tension of the rope in the inward direction so this is centripetal force work done by the force at any instant is zero that is due to the fact that the force is inwards and the displacement is in this direction after some time the stone would be here so displacement and force are perpendicular no work is done fd cos 90 cos 90 is zero some students have also argued that sir after one complete revolution the stone uh, uh, comes back to its own place so the displacement is zero in that way also work done can be zero it can be very well proved okay let's move ahead okay this is a non uniform beam of weight 120 newton it is pivoted over here so this is the pivot point and this is where the weight that is 120 newton acts on it so this 120 newton actually rotates the entire beam in clockwise direction so this would be bending in this clockwise direction and of course the force f in the applied upward direction f applied in the upward direction would try to rotate this in anti clockwise direction so in equilibrium condition anti clockwise torque or moment should be equal to clockwise torque or the moment so f multiplied by the distance from the pivot so this is the force and distance from the pivot is 0 0.8 that is equal to 120 newtons multiplied by the distance from the pivot is given to you as 0.2 meters meter meter getting cancelled this is one za four za and this is 4 ones are 30 za so f applied is 30 newtons and why this is the minimum force because it is at the maximum distance away from the pivot that's why the force is minimum okay let's go ahead mira chose to use a tackle and dock system of nine pulleys instead of single movable pulley so in single movable pulley what do you have is this is the load right and then this is the point where you exert the effort in the upward direction and the another end of the single movable pulley is fixed so there are two tensions that actually support the load right so the mechanical advantage is two in ideal conditions whereas in case of nine pulleys the mechanical advantage would be nine in case of the ideal pulley so larger the mechanical advantage lesser the effort you need to apply to lift the load right so what is the advantage so to decrease the effort correct you may write that why should she, she connect more number of pulleys in the upper fixed block because the effort to be in downward direction or convenient direction more the number of pulleys up compared to down the effort is always in the downward direction so you may use this one right convenient direction of the effort the next question says that the sumit does the work of 600 joules in 10 minutes so the power by the sumit is equal to work done by sumit upon time taken by the sumit so this is 600 joules divided by 10 minutes and the power by amit is equal to work done by Amit divided by time taken by Amit and that is equal to 300 joules divided by 20 minutes. Do not spoil your time in conversion of the units. Anyhow, it is comparison, the ratio, so the units will get cancelled. 600 by 10 divided by 300 by 20, so minutes, minutes gets cancelled, joule, joule gets cancelled. 600 by 10, that is 20 upon 300. 1 za 2 za 1 za 2 za that is 4 is to 1 so the power of sumit is to power of amit is equal to 4 is to 1 that is the answer to the problem now in the next question you are being asked that five bulbs are connected in series right so let me draw the diagram very quickly it's not required but i'll try to explain you in a better version so there are five bulbs let us assume all equal resistances so large larger number of bulbs more the resistance is in series so larger is the resistance over here right and let's connect a battery of voltage v and let's say that some current i1 comes out so you can even draw an equivalent circuit this is 5r because all the resistances are connected in series 
this is the voltage this is the current i1 so here v divided by phi times r is the i1 current now say for example one of the bulb goes off right so what do you have is there are one two three and four bulbs now and the same battery is being connected let's say that this time the current is i2 you might have already guessed it that's now since the number of resistance has decreased now the total resistance over here is r r r r so it is 4 r so 4 r is the resistance and then the current is i2 so same battery so here the current i2 is equal to v upon 4 r now just compare the current i2 is larger than i1 because look at the denominator it has decreased so the current has increased with the same battery now the resistance of the entire circuit has decreased now intensity of light intensity means the power see earlier through you may take this uh, you may consider this as diagram a and this as diagram b so in diagram a power was equal to i i1 square times r and in the second case it is i2 square times r look at one single bulb in both the cases now larger current is passing through the same bulb in the second circuit so that bulb will be emitting more power okay so more brightness or the more the intensity so the intensity of each bulb will increase in the second case that is the answer to the problem now rohan conducted the experiments on echo in two different mediums so that means let's say this is these are two hills and rohan is standing here Rohan is standing here and over here there is oxygen gas, over here there is benzene liquid. So, here the sound hits and comes back, right? And the minimum distance is minimum distance for the echo to be heard is we'll have to take minimum time that is 0 0.1 second. The sound goes, I mean, the distance, the difference between two time for the echo to be heard is 0 0.2 sec 0 0.1 second that is irrespective of the medium two sound waves must have a gap of 0.1 seconds whatsoever may be the medium so we will take the time 0.1 second in both the cases here the distance is x meters so x and x so twice of x is equal to speed in the oxygen is given 340 into time is 0 0.1 second so x over here is 340 or 34 by 2 so answer is 17 meters now here in liquid it travels a distance y and y so 2y is equal to speed in benzene is 200 into time we'll have to take 0.1 second that is the minimum that is the minimum time for the two sounds to be heard clear whatsoever may be the medium so here it is 20 divided by 2 so answer is 10 meters since in the question it is being asked compare so you need to find out the ratio x is to y is equal to 17 is to 10 or you may also write down 1.7 is to 1 that is the answer to the problem okay question number three in the reading glass what should be the position of the object now see why do we use a reading glass because reading glasses are or the magnifying glass is a convex lens now you are uh, intending to read the newspaper suppose and the letters are so so uh, small that you are unable to see them so this is the focus this is the optical center now the newspaper which is to be read will be kept here so this is the object which is kept between f and o so your eyes will be here and this is your newspaper and you will see the larger fonts like this so if the object is placed between f and o a magnified image is seen right so that's why we use the reading glasses as the convex lens over here the principle is the object must be placed between f and o or focus and the optical center why can't we use concave lens because it will give diminished image the newspaper letters are its image will be even smaller and we want to actually magnify that or you may, you may also write down magnification of concave lens is less than one that's why so the image will be still smaller our purpose is to magnify them 
and with the concave lens they will be even more even more diminished so we don't want that thing to happen right let's move ahead the fuse is rated a fuse is rated 5 amperes now the geyser so the power of the geyser is given that is 1540 watts the voltage is given 220 volts so that means power is equal to voltage times current so 1540 is equal to 220 times i so 0 0 this is direct multiple of 7 so current is 7 amperes so that means geyser can function very well if you provide 7 amperes current but now what will happen suppose this is the live wire live wire and then there is a fuse of rating 5 amperes now this is your geyser and then that heating coil and then this is the neutral wire so it requires 7 ampere current so the moment 7 ampere current passes through this this fuse wire will melt and the fuse fuse will blow up so we can't use this one the rating minimum should be 7 amperes because this rating is 5 amperes above 5 amperes the fuse wire will melt so that's why so that itself is the justifying answer the calculation itself so the answer is no you can't use that state two factors affecting the speed of rotation in dc motor you can use the uh, you can increase the emf of the battery or the current passing through the coil should be more the number of turns can be increased the power of the magnet can be increased all such answers right how much heat is required to convert ice to water so basically we are going to use the formula q is equal to ml because this is a typical uh, state change question right so q is equal to mass is given to us 500 grams latent heat is 330 joule per gram so gram gram getting cancelled 5 3 is a 15 1 5 3 is a 15 so 16 and then three zeros joule is the answer to the problem let me see multiplication is okay yeah three zeros yeah it's correct so this is the answer to our problem 165000 please do not use q is equal to mc delta t that is to be only used in case of the temperature rise now the last part copy and complete the reaction so uranium 92235 plus neutron so this is a typical fission reaction right so we get barium that is 56 plus we don't know let me call this number as x the atomic number sorry the mass number and chromium sorry uh, krypton is 92 mass number is given atomic number let us assume y plus 3 neutrons this is 0 and 1 right please watch my radioactivity lectures if you do not understand this very well I am going to paste the link in the description right so what we are going to do is see uh, take the bottom part first like this and try to solve 92 plus 0 so 92 plus 0 gives 56 plus y now plus this number needs to be multiplied 3 times 0 is 0 so from here y is equal to 92 minus 56 this is 36 right in the same way if we go for the top part then over here 235 this is 235 plus 1 235 plus 1 gives x plus 92 plus you need to multiply these two numbers 3 and 1 3 so 236 minus 95 that is x and i think this will be equal to 141 right so that is 236 minus 95 that is 141 right correct so that means we are filling this one this is 30 this is 36 and over here this is 141 that is the answer to the problem okay so let's start with section b now the image of the candle is formed at a distance from a spherical lens so we don't know which kind of lens we are talking about it may be concave it may be convex so but u is always negative for whichsoever lens it is 36 centimeter and it is formed on the screen that means it's a real image and real images are always formed in convex lenses so that means 
the focal length of the lens whatsoever it may be or we need to find out should be positive and the screen is kept at a distance of 72 centimeters so basically they are giving you the image distance and real images are always found formed on uh, the right hand side of the lens so something like this the object is always kept on the left hand side of the lens and the image is formed at the right hand side of the lens if it is real like this so the image is formed on the screen so this distance is v and v is given to you as 72 centimeters so by default all distances on right hand sides are taken to be positive now what am i going to do is i'm going to apply the lens formula so one upon f is one upon v minus one upon u so one upon f that is one upon 72 minus one upon minus 36 so that is one upon 72 plus one upon 36 so i should be multiplying up and down by two and two so this is one upon 72 plus two upon 72 so that is three upon 72 so basically focal length is equal to 72 by 3 3 ones are 3 twos are 6 3 fours are 12 so that is 24 centimeter that is the answer to the problem okay this is the focal length now if you want to find out the power in diopters power is equal to 1 upon the focal length so it is 1 upon 24 by 100 meters because diopter is 1 upon meter so this is 100 divided by 24 1 upon meter is diopter 2 12s are 2 50s are again 2 25s are 2 6 are and this is equal to 6 4s are 24 6 1s are 6 4s are 24.1 so 0 0.1 approximately is the answer to the problem and yes you should be very careful you should be writing plus sign over there right so 6 4s are 24 let me uh, verify again so one six one yeah it's it's absolutely correct so this is how we need to do that right okay next is you are being given a table and you are supposed to find out what is a so gamma rays x-ray uv rays visible infrared of course these are microwaves now the radiation to detect fracture in bones of course they are x-rays name one property common to a and all are electromagnetic waves they both are em waves they travel with 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second in vacuum they are not deflected by magnetic and electric field you can write down any right why do we use red color as the danger signal and that is due to the scattering scattering is proportional to 1 upon lambda raised to 4 and red has highest amount of or highest wavelength so that the scattering is very very less so the rays which scatter less they can go far away to a long distance very straight so danger signals are expected to go to a long distance straight that's why we use red color because they scattered by a very less amount okay now question number four the third part the diagram shows that the path of the blue ray like this okay so uh, what else they are giving yes i forgot to mention that this whole angle is given to you as 133 degrees like this 133 degrees okay and this is the blue ray and we don't know this angle this angle is given to us as 90 degree yes and yeah that is that is it right so first thing is i am going to investigate that this is the normal right i should have drawn it a little bit straight this is the normal yeah this angle is 90 degree and of course this angle is also 90 degree so the remaining this angle is 43 degrees and it is given in the question that the ray travels along the surface which means that this angle itself is the critical angle because the angle of incidence at which the refracted ray travels parallel to the base is the critical angle so critical angle for the blue ray is 43 degrees so i should be write down for the blue is 43 degrees what is the measure of angle of prism angle of prism means light enters through surface ab and light exits through surface ac so this and these are the two surfaces that are being used by the light ray so this angle is known as the angle of prism so now we know that if this angle is 43 this angle is 47 this is of course 90 degree so this becomes how much 
90 plus 47 okay should be so basically this is the leftover angle is let's calculate that so it is 90 minus 47 so the answer is 43 degrees so this itself is 43 degrees right i hope you might have got it right that uh, let me verify all the calculations again yeah this is on 90 minus 123 yeah it's correct right like that so the angle of prism turns out to be 43 degrees which color should we replace so that it undergoes tir now see v i b g y o r this is y okay now sine of critical angle is equal to 1 upon refractive index which is given by c by v so basically we can also write down sine c is equal to v upon c now if you go in this direction right inside glass inside glass from going from violet to red the speed that is v increases so if v increases then v and c critical angle are directly proportional so the critical angle also increases so if this critical angle increases right that means the ray will be that possibility of ray uh, you know undergoing tir will be lesser and lesser larger the critical angle the possibility of that ray to undergo tir is less so that means now at blue light so that means that the critical angle of the blue light if it is 43 then of the green light and on all those should be more and if i reach till say red i will i might get the angle as 48 degree as well 48 degrees so in this direction it uh, increases and in this direction the critical angle would decrease i should be let's say that the 41 degree 41 degrees is the uh, critical angle for uh, the violet light and let's say 42 degrees for the indigo light so now if instead of blue if i incident violet or indigo still this angle will remain 43 but this angle the angle of incidence is now more than the critical angle of violet and the indigo so they both will undergo tir but had it been say green light falling or the red light falling over there the angle of incidence still remains 43 but the critical angle is more so the ray would be exiting out of the surface ac so this was the trickiest part right let's go ahead question number five the refractive index of glass refractive index of glass with respect to water that means this is medium number two where you have the refracted ray this is the incident ray medium number one so if i draw the diagram just to show you then the glass this is water the first medium where you have incident ray and it is going inside the glass so of course it will bend towards the normal right so this is glass medium number two now if i put a mirror plane mirror over here the ray would bounce back and principle of reversibility will be applied and medium number one will become medium number two okay so this is the formula one upon refractive index of glass with respect to air that is one upon refractive index of water with respect to glass so here simply you are supposed to find out mu wg that is equal to 1 upon mu gw that is equal to 1 upon 9 by 8 that is equal to 8 by 9 that is the answer name the principle used answer is principle of reversibility of light now in this case suppose if i remove the mirror and if i heat up the media what's going to happen let's see right oh i rubbed it <laughs> that's fine so i'll draw it very fast quickly our first medium was glass this is glass and this was water and the refractive index of glass with respect to water is also equal to refractive index of glass upon refractive index of water now if you 
change the temperature of water that means if you heat or increase if i increase the temperature of this medium right i'll explain this one deeply so what is going to happen the refractive index of water will go down the medium will be, will become rarer and rarer so if this goes down this will increase okay now opposite if you decrease the temperature of water the refractive index will increase and the refractive index of glass with respect to water will decrease so the answer is yes the refractive index overall answer will change that is the answer to the problem next this is the light travels a distance of 10x yeah this is the same question uh, this is yeah question number four i think question number four no this is question number five sorry yeah question number five the third part second part so the light is traveling 10x units in time t1 in vacuum okay so i should be expressing c that is the speed of light that is distance upon okay and it travels x units in t2 time so and this is some another medium so i'm going to imagine the speed as v that is distance upon time t2 okay using this answer light travels 20x distance in time t1 in diamond that's not possible see in vacuum also in vacuum also in t1 time it travels 10x distance so how can it travel in the same time or distance in denser medium come on in denser medium the speed falls so the distance should be less sorry in the same time t1 less than 10x then i could have accepted but here the speed is maximum in vacuum so if light travels 10x distance in time t1 in vacuum then it should be traveling less distance here it is given 20x so this is false correct now what you are supposed to express you are supposed to express the refractive index in terms of t1 and t2 so refractive index of the medium is equal to simply c by v c is 10x upon t1 divided by x upon t2 so this is 10x by t1 times t2 upon x x x getting cancelled so your answer is 10 t2 upon t1 that is the answer okay so now let's move with the third part and it is said that the prism is placed at minimum deviation minimum deviation means the refracted ray is parallel to the base of the prism so that means the refracted ray should be exactly parallel to the base of the prism like this this should be parallel to the base of the prism and now it will come out like this and this angle is the angle of emergence this is also 45 because angle of incidence and angle of emergence are same as 45 degree at minimum deviation condition even if you can uh, very well find out the angle of minimum deviation with the help of i plus e is equal to a plus delta now this is 45 e is also 45 this is 60 so you can find out the minimum deviation that turns out to be 90 minus 60 that is 30 degree that is the answer to the problem so if you extend this and if you extend this backwards the angle of minimum deviation is 30 degree okay state two factors on which the angle of deviation depends a wavelength of light then refractive index of the prism right angle of prism so these are some factors okay define center of gravity so it is the point it may be inside the body it may be outside the body uh, at which the total uh, sum of the moments of all particles weight turns out to be zero right so you may write it down from the textbook itself and the b part states that there is a hollow cone cone is something like this and its center of gravity is somewhere over here at a distance of h by 3 from the base right so h is the complete distance from top to the bottom so this is h and from h by 3 from the base is 
the center of gravity located. So, h by 3 is 6 by 3. So, that is 2 centimeter from the broader base. So, from the bottom 2 centimeter up is the answer to the problem or the center of gravity. Will the position change if it is completely filled? No, because see the mass still remains. If it is completely filled, the mass also is still concentrated towards the heavier part. So, it will still remain here. Yeah, had it been the case that you fill it half with the mercury or something like that, in that case, the, the center of gravity will change uh, to the heavier portion. But those kind of problems are there in grade 11. So, you do not have to worry about it. So, answer to the problem over here is no. Okay. So, let us go ahead with question number 6 2. Here, a diagram is given and two marbles are being rolled from an in, uh, from a slope like structure like this. And then, one of the path is rough. So, that means this one is rough and this one is smooth. So, when you have a smooth surface with no friction, there is no loss of energy in form of heat due to friction, right? So, the total energy is going to be conserved and the mechanical energy, that means the sum of kinetic and potential. See here, marble A and B, suppose it has total energy which is in form of potential energy, let us call 100 joules, right. But you cannot expect along a rough path, exactly it will have 100 joules, it will be a little bit less because some energy goes in form of heat as well as the sound, right. So, you may expect the energy to be somewhere around say 98 joules. So, in 98 joules, it will not reach the same height. So, somewhere down the line in along the rough part, the ball will reach at a lesser height. But what happens for the ball A? There is no loss of energy. So, the 100 joules remains 100 joules. So, to attain the same energy, the same height should be reached. So, the ball A will surely reach here. So, which marble will surely reach? A is the answer. Along which path the mechanical energy is conserved along path 1? Mechanical energy means kinetic plus potential and some amount of heat will be lost along the path 2. Law of conservation of energy is the total energy including everything and that is applied everywhere, come on. Along which path? Both. So, path 1 and 2 both, correct? Now, the next, the third part, two pulleys are given, complete the diagram and velocity ratio must be 2. Keeping in mind that the effort is always downwards, so I will start winding up the rope from here. Effort is downwards and like this, like the hook is here and like this one, right? So, two tensions are supporting the load and the effort is in the downward direction. So, this is our diagram, right? So, now let us go for the B part. Load is given. Efficiency is given. We need to find out the mechanical advantage and the effort which is needed to lift the load. So, this belongs to the same pulley question, right? So, we are very sure about this formula. Efficiency is equal to Ma upon Vr. So, this is 80 percent. So, this is 0 0.8. Mechanical advantage we do not know. Velocity ratio is 2. So, mechanical advantage is equal to 1.6, right? Now, mechanical advantage is equal to load upon effort that is 1.6 and the load is given to you as 4 point, sorry, 48 kgf divided by effort. This is 48 that is equal to 1.6. So, the effort is equal to 48 kgf divided by 1.6. I am going to multiply up and down by 10, 10. So, this is 480 divided by 16 kgf. So, 16 ones are 16 twos are 32, 16 threes are 48. So, 30 kgf is the answer to the problem. So, that is 30 kgf and here the mechanical advantage is 1.6. So, that is the solution to the problem. Now, let us solve question number 7, the first part. Name the waves used in sonar, sound navigation and ranging. They are ultrasonic sound waves or simple ultrasonic waves can also do. Now, 
in the B part in the above diagram, Lata stands in between. So this is Lata and stands between both the clips and claps her hands. So one of the sound will go in this direction and comes back. The another sound will go in this direction and will come back. But there is no possibility of echo from this side. And most of the students, they don't understand that. See, how come? Understand this. This total distance is 170. And this distance is 160. So what is the remaining distance over here? 10 meters. And the minimum distance to hear the echo is 17 meters. So from this side, you can never expect the echo. So simply, the Lata is standing here. The cliff is here. The distance is given to you as 160. So sound will travel 160 like this, 160 back again. So that means the distance is 320 meters. That is equal to speed into time. So which formula I have used? 2D is equal to V into T. So twice the distance, that is twice the 160 meter is equal to speed. That is 320 into the time taken is determine the time taken. So we can very easily find out and the time turns out to be one second. That is the answer to the problem. Let's go ahead with question number seven, second part A. So X is a radioactive nuclei and it disintegrates into Y by releasing alpha particle. So basically for the first reaction, this is the parent nuclei, this is the daughter nuclei. So I should be writing X gives Y plus the alpha particle that is 2HE4, right? And for the next reaction, Y becomes the parent nuclei, right? And the Z becomes the daughter nuclei. So I should also write something like this, that X releases minus 2HE4 to give Y, right? For the first reaction. Now, Y disintegrates or Y releases, you can take always take this on the other side and this on the other side. So, Y releases the beta particle to give Z. So, in two step, this nuclear reaction is happening and Z credentials, that means the atomic number and mass number are 91, 234. Now, let us go uh, backwards. So, this should be 90. Yeah, exactly 90 because the atomic number increases by 1 and the mass number remains as it is 234. Now, we have found out for the X it is 90 and 234 and now this must be 92 because atomic number decreases by 2. So, 92 minus 2 is 90 and here it should be 238 because 238 minus 4 is 234. So, finally, this reaction needs to be understood in two different steps like this and then Y gives Z plus like this. This is 91 and yeah, 234. So, most of the students, they directly add the atomic number and mass number and then they try to sort it out. That is not possible. You need to reorganize the reaction into two different steps identify the parent and the daughter nuclei and then go ahead. So, it can be broken down into two steps like this. So, if you are going ahead with this way, this is also fine. So, this is 91 plus minus 1. So, this has to be 90. 234 plus 0, it is 234. And then here, we have found out this as 90 and 234. So, now you can add it up like this, 238 and this is 92, right? So, it is something like this. Now, let's, let's go to the B part. Uranium is available in 235 and 238, which is more fissionable. Of course, uranium 235 is used as a fissionable product uh, in the nuclear reactors because its fusion is very, very easily done. Whereas 235 is not feasible, its fission does not take place. But yes, you can actually convert that into plutonium, which is fissionable, right? So, 235 is the answer to our problem. Now, in the third part, in the third part, we are given a vibrating tuning fork and it is what happens is the moment you vibrate it, so the sound waves go, reflect back and then there is a superposition of the waves and a loud sound is heard here. So, basically, this is a phenomenon related to resonance, right? This happens only in resonance. 
and why a loud sound is heard because the natural frequency of the air column matches with the natural frequency or the frequency of the tuning fork now we know that frequency is proportional to one upon length so if you increase the frequency of this tuning fork so you will have to reduce the length of the air column remember water column is not vibrating length of the air column is important the air particles are vibrating right and i can also calculate see this is the first possibility this is the air column and this is the first possibility and this is one fourth of the wave so this is lambda times four that is equal to length so lambda by four is equal to the length that is five centimeter so i can also calculate wavelength of the sound as 20 centimeters this is little bit of advanced level but still i have told you so in this uh, c part if the frequency of the tuning fork is replaced with the frequency higher frequency then the length of the air column will decrease of course is the answer to the problem right let's go to question number eight here the table of v and i are given so if i divide these two i'll get the answer as five ohm here this is what 6.33 ohm and uh, this is two ones are two this is about 7.5 ohm so you can very well see that the resistance is not remaining constant of certain material so that means if you are uh, like increasing the current the voltage increases but the proportionality is not maintained so v proportional to i is not maintained over here so this is definitely a non ohmic resistor justify your answer you can also write it down that uh, v is not proportional to i as seen from the table that's why right so the resistance keeps on fluctuating or you can directly say that here the current increases i mean this multiplied by this is phi this multiplied by this should be phi but that's not happening so that's why it is a non-ohmic resistor all right now state the ohm's law at a constant temperature the potential difference across the resistance is directly proportional to the current this is what needs to be written now the transformer is given this is the primary coil and more number of turns are seen and here less number of turns are seen so this is step down transformer right now what else is asked in the question they are asking in this type of transformer the wire is thicker in which of the coils of course we need to obtain the current here we require this transformer to obtain large current here obtain means output so we require larger amount of current in output for that the resistance should be less and resistance r is equal to rho l by a so the resistance can be less only if the area of the cross section of the wire that means this area of the wire should be large so thicker wires have larger area lesser resistance so more of the current can be drawn from that so the answer is secondary the reason is what i have explained to you right this seems to be a little bit easy question the third part calculate the total resistance so i can write down the 10 and 6 are in series so 16 ohm 12 and 4 are in series so again 16 ohm both are connected in parallel the direct answer is 8 ohms right so the total resistance of the and how come this one so you should have shown the calculation 1 upon r is equal to 1 upon 16 plus 1 upon 16 that is 2 upon 16 1 upon 8 so the overall resistance of the circuit is 8 ohms calculate the current so v is equal to i times r the total current we don't know the total voltage is 4 volts the total resistance is 8 ohms so the current is 0 0.5 amperes that is the answer to the problem state whether the uh, current through 10 ohmic resistor is greater than less than or equal to that of the 12 ohm resistor uh, which part 10 okay here 10 ohm and here uh, 12 ohm no the current in both the wings will be equally distributed the current does not depend upon the individual resistance it depends upon the overall wing the total resistance here is also 16 here is also 16 so the current will be divided into two equal parts that is out of 0 
0.25 ampere will go up and 0.25 ampere will go down. So, that means from both the resistance 12 ohm and 4 ohm 0.25 ampere current will pass because they are in series and at the top also 10 ohm and 6 ohm will also feel the same amount of current that is 0.25. Do not get into that trap that lesser the resistance more the more the current that is only true if in case of 1 1 resistance here there are uh, 10 and 6 12 and 4 both connected in series mm -hmm. so equal amount of current will pass so answer is the equal right question number 9 85 grams of water is cooled to 5 degrees so that means its temperature is lowered and that means heat is given out or heat is released by adding certain amount of ice so common sense the entire ice also melts into zero degree water and that water also reaches to five degree because in equilibrium everything must be same so heat lost according to principle of calorimetry according to principle of calorimetry heat lost is equal to heat gained heat lost is by the water so mc delta t of the water that is equal to you have taken some ice at zero degree that ice completely got melted so ml of the ice now that water same mass of water so m its temperature started rising from zero to five degree because the final temperature is five degree right that's what is given over here so it is mc delta t of the water now let's plug in the values so this is 85 into c of water is 4.2 you know what i always prefer okay i'll let you know 4.2 joules this is joule per gram per degree celsius into uh, delta t is from 30 to 5 that is equal to we don't know m we do know the value of 336 plus m the same m c is again 4.2 delta t from 0 to 5 that means 5 degrees celsius now see this uh, is a little bit uh, you know difficult i say so what i prefer is 85 times you can take this as one calorie per gram per degree celsius times this is 25 that is m into you can take this as 80 because this is joule per gram so it will be 80 calorie per gram plus m into again one calorie per gram per degree celsius into 5 now so it will be a little bit more easier so now this is 85 into 25 that is m common here it is 80 plus 1 so m is equal to 85 into 25 upon 81 now i am expecting you to find out the answer <laughs> okay let me do that for you uh, this is 85 let me calculate it what is the answer 85 times 25 divided by 81 so this is approximately 26 grams so the final answer the mass of the ice is about 26.2 grams is the answer to the problem Let us go to the second A, question number 9. Why does it become pleasantly warm after the lakes start freezing? And see, the answer to the problem is very easy. Let me draw and explain it to you what is happening. There is a large consumption of the heat energy, right? And due to that, Okay, so now what do we have is suppose this is a lake, right? And say the temperature is this is the lake and pleasantly warm when lakes start freezing, right? This is our lake, the lake contains water, and this is the temperature of the surrounding. Now see what happens is this lake which is made up of water now 
when the water starts converting into ice so what happens here what is happening water gets converted into ice so lot of heat energy is extracted out from this water it's just like the refrigerator you are pulling you are putting some water into the ice tray and putting it into the uh, the refrigerator the refrigerator extracts that heat and throws it at the back side of the refrigerator which is in our home right itself so that part becomes warm it's very simple ice getting converted into water sorry the water gets converted into ice heat is released now that heat energy is lost in the surroundings like this heat is given out so the surrounding becomes little bit of warm so that's why it is written that uh, pleasantly warm how come it happened right so you should have explained it in this way that when uh, water in the lake gets converted into ice a lot of heat energy is released into the surroundings so the surrounding becomes warm water freezes to form ice so this is a case of state change and in case of state change the temperature is constant average kinetic energy is proportional to temperature so the kinetic energy proportional to temperature there is no change in temperature so there is no change in the kinetic energy so the answer is zero how come the temperature itself is proportional to average kinetic energy more the temperature more faster the molecules move so there is no change in the temperature so no change in the average kinetic energy so the change in kinetic energy is zero right okay now in the c part which will contain more heat energy so one gram ice at zero degree celsius and then this is one gram of water at zero degree celsius of course this is the answer how come see suppose this has a certain amount of heat energy now you will have to give extra amount of energy equal to ml so that it will convert into zero degree of the uh, zero degree water right so ice when you heat it it will convert into zero degree water so ice had a certain amount of heat energy now you are adding certain amount of heat energy and it gets converted into water so and how much is that so l is equal to somewhere around 80 calorie per gram or in textbook it is written 336 joule per gram so you have one gram ice at zero degree celsius suppose it has some heat energy let's say x now you give 336 joules to it and it will convert into one gram of water at zero degree celsius so which is more amount of heat energy of course x plus 336 that is water that is it so this is the answer to the problem one gram water at zero degree celsius let's discuss question number nine three let's move ahead state one factor that affects the magnitude of the induced current in the ac generator right you can write many such factors are there the speed of rotation also matters the area of the coil matters and uh, the number of turns also matter the number of turns in, uh, turns in the uh, armature coil also right so you can write down any one you will get the marks for that b part given below is the circuit to identify the magnetic effects of the current a b c d is the cardboard okay this is a b c d and at p point you are supposed to okay kept perpendicular there is a battery battery means a fixed supply you may assume this as 10 volts 12 volt whatever it is it can't change at p point we are putting a magnetic compass of course we are going to put a magnetic compass over there and before and after passing the current respectively the position okay so this is the position of the magnetic needle this is north this is south again this is south this is north this is off this is before passing current and this is after passing current now here if i put a magnet let me draw this again bigger version more clear picture right now this is the wire right now suppose and yeah where is that point here here i am supposed to put the magnetic needle right 
Now, if the current goes upwards, right? If the current goes upwards, I'm going to use the right hand thumb rule, right? So, there are many different rules. You can write down ampere swimming rule, but I should say right hand uh, thumb rule or right hand grip rule is also one of the answer to the problem. So, how to predict this is right hand thumb rule. Ampere swimming rule is also one of the answers. Now, state the direction of current, right? Now, suppose if the current is upwards and here at this point, what will happen? Use right hand like this, place the thumb in the direction of the current. The magnetic field lines are circular. So, at this point, at this particular point, the tangent will be in this direction like this. And in the same direction, the north pole and the south pole of the needle would rest like this. Uh, this is difficult for me to explain in this way, but you just try it out, right hand thumb rule. And at point P, it will be in this direction, magnetic field. And in the direction of magnetic field, the tangent gives the direction of magnetic field, the magnetic needle rests. Here, the opposite is given. Here, if you look at the picture, in the picture itself, it is like this. So, the north is here, the south is here, which means the current should go down. So, the answer is x to y. The current is coming from x to y downwards. So, here it is x to y. And when R is increased, this means this is a variable resistance. So, you can very well apply the Ohm's law. V is equal to y times R. Now, see, we are using a DC power source. So, V is constant. So, V remains constant. And if you increase R, the I will reduce. So, if the current decreases, the magnetic field becomes weaker and weaker. So, what happens is the gap between the gap between the magnetic field lines will increase. This is one of the options that you can write. What will be the effect on magnetic field lines? You can also say the number of magnetic field lines will reduce or the distance between the magnetic field lines also reduces. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, the distance between the magnetic field lines will increase. Increase because less, more closer the magnetic field lines, more closer the magnetic field lines, the, the magnetic field is stronger. Here, the current is decreasing, magnetic field is decreasing. So, the gap between magnetic field lines will increase. So, I would write this as the answer. Gap between magnetic field lines increases or you may also write it down the number of magnetic field lines decreases. Okay. So, uh, let us wait for the board to officially release its answer key and this was my attempt to explain you right. So, thank you very much for watching the video.